Hey guys, it's Brendan the Paleo Dude, and welcome back to another Jurassic unboxing and review. Today we'll be taking a look at the final wave of the Dino Tracker Strike Attack figures. I found the whole set at uh, Walmart in California while I was on holiday, and man oh man did I think I needed to track down these two because of how rare they are, but I actually found them stashed away in like the far back of an aisle. Um, I was totally not expecting to find them. The Atrociraptor and the Dilophosaurus are very common. You can still find them at most Walmarts um, here and there, but uh, they are quite interesting, but not as interesting as these two guys down here, which are new molds. So the Pre Priestosuchus um, is a very unique looking uh, croco something or other. It has a kind of Tyrannosaur-like head, kind of suffering from the same um, same thing as the Dimetrodon figure from the Dominion lineup, where it has this like overly Rex-like head. Um, but I do love the teeth on it, the interlock, and the action feature is really cool. Um, it looks more stylized. You can see it's got those like fish fins down the back on the tail too. Whereas if you take a look at the uh, Postasuchus, this guy looks more natural and normal, like the real life counterpart with the crocodilian uh, armor down the back and the uh, just normal looking head and skull and teeth. But um, I do appreciate the stylization because again, this is uh, Jurassic World where these things are not fully pure. Um, do also love the horns on the face it makes it stand out in comparison to other um, four-legged running croc dudes. Um, and I'm pretty sure that guy's from the Triassic. And then this guy here, the, um, should I say, Giganto, Gigant, Giant, Gigant, Gigant Spinosaurus, Gigant Spinosaurus, the G-Spino. Um, it has a off eye, the eye misprinted, and uh, I picked it up anyways because uh, I did not want to buy it on eBay for a higher price, and I knew I wouldn't be seeing it at all in stores after this, so um, I kind of jumped on it. Also, it has a um, scan code with a painted um, plate on the back, which is actually really nice. I was surprised by that. Um, and these big rubbery spikes on the side of the body. Um, and then the Atrociraptor comes with a cool action feature. The first time we've seen this in Atrociraptor, it does a little head bob. Um, and if you open the mouth, it does a little bite attack, I guess. Um, and the Dilophosaurus is also really cool because it has that frill feature. Um, and they painted the tip of the tail. Yay, that's so cool. Usually we don't get tail paint on these guys anymore, but... Um, it's definitely sporting that kind of mountain-y vibe. Um, it's more like snow tundra sort of, um, aesthetic. So it really looks the part. Same with the truss raptor with the uh, grass uh, jungle, um, and then the ocean theme, and then the desert theme. They're all completely matching their, uh, their allotted, um, ecosystem environment, um, the colors on this guy are really cool. I like that the orange kind of transitions over that beige on the back. It's kind of more like a peachy, warmer beige. Um, I know the lighting's not that good right now, but if you control the head um, back and forth, the tail whips around, and of course these spikes are not painted. So we'll actually get this guy out first. Clip these. Um, so the packaging, of course, has the desert... Um, theme on it and then the world background and it shows if you move the head around the tail swings around so like that and it actually has quite tall legs they kind of remind me of the uh, miragaya legs but way thicker you can see that thigh is absolutely massive like they are bulky legs in comparison just absolutely fat as hell so that is quite interesting that they decided to go with that, which actually sets it apart quite well from the Miragaya in terms of like overall appearance, because both have those three tail spikes, but the uh, uh, G-Spino has these massive 
<laughs> massive, massive, massive shoulder spikes in comparison to this guy, um, which is insane. It also has that shorter neck and more of a stegosaurus-like head. Um, looks more natural. And uh, for uh, one more comparison, I actually like this guy a lot. It's the... Uh, ooh, starts with a C, but um, I think what you do is you control it by the tail and the front of the body moves and those those side spikes are supposed to be like the action feature because when you do it reverse it doesn't really do anything but um, it also has those little shoulder spikes they're quite tiny they kind of have similar heads they both have that very stegosaurus vibe um, this one's more nicer it's fleshed out this one's more shrink wrapped you can see more of the muscle and the bone definition whereas this one's um, a bit pudgier on the cheeks but a more natural look and appearance and i do like that gray um, beak it's got going on also the under belly uh, well neck area and the chin are painted the same color as the back which also helps um, bring this animal more uh, realism so I, I like that they went the extra mile with that paint as well as the uh, the paint on the spikes on the back. So I'm gonna pan the camera down a little bit. Um, next we'll do the pre prehistosuchus. I keep trying to say prehistosuchus. I don't know why. Um, I think I used to say that as a kid, but yeah. Um, back of the box is cool. The render is pretty nice. You can see it's got the chomping feature. Um, now this one has kind of like bent um joints so you can see it's it's more in like a crouched prowling position less of like an upright stance like the post -asukas. but they're both uh pretty reasonable they're the priest asukas priest asukas there we go is a little bit longer than the post asukas and uh, i like the action feature uh, a little more because it's so simple and easy to do just kind of chomp it's got a wide face too this guy's pretty menacing um would hate to see it like in a sewer setting it's uh looks like something that would uh sneak up on its prey in the water just due to that um fishy looking tail obviously um this guy's made out to be a swimmer of some sort even though it would have been a land predator um in actuality but love that chomping feature so cool and uh it's gray with a kind of like bluey green um striping that also adds to its sleek aesthetic it's kind of pointed forwards more so it's this whole thing looks like it's um about to spring at you um also a little bit of the brown off the head is um bleeding down to the neck which also adds um to the paint detail a lot and the entire inside of the mouth is painted um it kind of reminds me of the Ornithosuchus from the Lost World lineup with those big freaky teeth and the chomp feature, I think. That rotates the head, oh my goodness. But yeah, they've, they've got those big freaky teeth on the croc dudes, so pretty neat. Um, the paint job's somewhat similar, kind of similar. Not so much, but uh, still neat nonetheless. And I'm glad to have another Triassic um, critter join the lineup so next we'll do the atrociraptor just yeet him out of there so this guy sports a green paint job and it has um the quills on the back of the head like the jp3 male raptor and that is quite interesting because the desert atrociraptor does not have that so this seems to be male and female um, uh, sexual dimorphism where you have um, these features in the male for uh, attracting a female and then the female's more, you know, bland in coloration and, and features and doesn't seem to be that much difference in the head sculpt right off the bat. Um, except for the addition of quills. I think that's pretty cool though that they decided to do that. Um, I think it adds a lot more depth to the animals themselves in uh, uh, unique distinctions instead of just doing the same mold over and over. And this is basically the same as the uh, battle damage across Raptor. That guy there, whoops. And uh, 
instead of having that um, feature where it does the head bob, it has the damage button on the back. But yeah, this is quite cool because now we have different colorations of these Atrociraptors and uh, they can be used for an alternative um, Atrociraptor squad or um, wild versions or whatnot. So it's pretty neat that they decide to go with that route. And I love the paint job on it. Um, these stripes definitely scream jungle. And of course the highlighting color on the eye is really nice along with that bright dark orange. Um, and of course, yeah, the mouth opens. There's no paint on the top jaw. Um, that's basically it. And the figure's legs can kind of spread apart so it can stand better if, there we go. So next, our last figure is the Arctic Mountaintop Dilophosaurus. Kind of odd place for it to live, but, um, ooh, it's kind of stuck in there. There's an additional uh, thingy, you can see the back leg is stuck in with that, so I'm going to have to cut that out. Maybe. Okay, put up a good fight, but a one is now free. You can see it's got a kind of purpley white. I keep getting this weird. Oh, it's from my scissors, actually. Okay, weird. Um, this purpley blue coloration, um, which is very light um, on the frill, and then this like dark gray for the frill and the head. And then you see this kind of brown, browny gray, just slightly, ever so slightly brown, um, going down the neck, two stripes, which end in some splotches down the bottom. And then the arms are the same color, um, I think as the frill, or they might be slightly brown. I think they're the same color. No, wait, they're darker. Okay, interesting. And then that goes over the um, scan code piece for some reason, and then to the tip of the tail, which is also that dark brown. Um, and then of course it has that fun action feature where you pull up on the tail and it does that little frill movement and chomp. It's very neat. And it's got a orange eye, with a little slit in it. It's hard to see in the lighting, but yeah, very fun action feature. It reminds me of the albino um, Dilophosaurus figure having that white coloration, but instead it has the dark around the frill and the head. Um, of course, this was first seen in this figure here and was later used in the um, Legacy Collection one where we have a like bright orange frill. So very cool that we got yet another Dilophosaurus with this action feature and this time supporting a unique color of um, arctic mountaintop snowy vibe. So this line is actually really nice. We get a variety of um, repaints as well as remolds and uh, I would count the Atrociraptor as a new mold. I mean it's completely retooled except for the quills but that definitely makes it unique compared to the rest of the Atrociraptors that we've already seen, as well as the color. This is the first green one. The rest are like whites and orange and red, more hotter colors. Um, and of course, the uh, Priestasuchus is another um, uh, quadrupedal, quad quadrupedal uh, kind of running croc from the Triassic. So. That's really cool to see um, yet another one make its way into the lineup. And of course, um, <laughs> another large shoulder spined stegosaur. I think this is our fourth now with the, uh, the Kentrosaurus also being a figure, but it's very unique in terms of color because this guy is desert themed and I think it fits very well with the rest of the lineup. So I would definitely give this final wave a nine out of 10 for creativity and uh, choice of colors, as well as unique species being represented. I think we also had that in the first wave where the Zuni Ceratops had the feathers added along the back, which made it stand out to its original 
and then we had the repaint of the uh whatever this guy was called it was some short name like s something or no gindi gindi dectes um and then we had two new molds of the um herrerasaurus and the uh, daphosaurus so it seems like this was the theme one repaint one modified figure and two new species um and i really happy they actually decided to do that um it gives more variety to some figures and also um some unique ones too for collectors so very fun uh i'm definitely going to miss the uh dino trackers lineup it had its own unique charm and the figures are quite unique in a mix of like super accurate to super inaccurate um stylization so the wide range made it fun for different ways of integrating them in they definitely have a lot of uh, compatibility with the older figures in terms of their stylization, uh, some more than others, but yeah, very unique and uh, definitely glad I picked them up when I did because I would probably have to buy them on eBay or uh, get them through a friend or whatnot. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, be sure to check out my previous videos. I unboxed and reviewed quite a lot of things in the past week. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with future videos. So I'll see you all in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.